Joining us now, News Nation political contributor Sean Spicer. He's also former White House press secretary and host of The Sean Spicer Show at SeanSpicer.com. Sean, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for having me. Uh, let me ask you, ahead of tonight's town hall, is Vivek a bigger threat to Trump or DeSantis? Oh, that's a really good question. You know, I was out with Leland at the State Fair, and it is amazing the amount of traction that he has been getting. I, I, I think that he's probably a bigger threat to DeSantis because right now DeSantis is positioning himself as the alternative to Trump. Uh, but he's stalled out. And if Vivek can continue to, to move forward, I think he can position himself uh, as that number two alternative. And frankly, without a voting record, having never held office, he's, he's a much harder person to define. Can I ask, what is your read on what's going on with DeSantis and his team? Because there was a period of time where he had a great amount of buzz, a great amount of momentum. What are we seeing right now? So look, as I said, I was in Iowa for the last few days. Uh, I, I think that the media has got to be careful about how it evaluates DeSantis. From a national standpoint, there's no question that he's had some missteps, uh, some financially, how much quick they've burned through money, organizationally, how they set stuff up. But I will tell you, Iowa is a state where if you look at the caucus winners, the last three cycles, Santorum, Cruz, Huckabee, these are people that, that spent a lot of time there and organized, went to all 99 counties, had a county chairman, spent the time building what it takes to win. And you were talking about 50, 60,000 people. DeSantis' team claims that they already have 10,000 of those caucus goers committed to him. Uh, I would be very careful about writing him off because if he wins Iowa, I think he shows that, he can, that Trump is vulnerable and then he can kind of keep, the momentum will propel him forward. So while he may not have, be having the best ride uh, nationally, I think they've, they've made it clear to everybody, they put all those chips in Iowa which is a straight out organizing state. This isn't where you mail your ballot in or show up for 10 minutes. You got to commit to stand in the corner of a room in a gym and a VFW and a government center for hours on end. And the DeSantis people understand that they have a lot of people who were on the cruise team last cycle, uh, well, in 2015 rather, that understand what it takes to win. So I would, I think that making sure that everybody's evaluating how they're running their race is critical. Okay, I do want to return to Ramaswamy quickly. He says President Biden is, quote, sleepwalking when it comes to our national defense. What does he mean by that? Do you agree? Yeah, I do. I don't know that I would say sleepwalking because I, I think it's just I sort of, I, I think, frankly, he's just misreading it. Look, you watch China on the ascent, the provo uh, provocative nature that they've engaged with, with us, and then the way that they've... Um, allied themselves with Russia, the, uh, the, the trials uh, and the war games that they just did off the coast of Alaska. I mean, we've got to take these guys more seriously, and, and they keep sending over John Kerry as if we have a Green New Deal to make with them. These are our enemies. These are people who have made it very clear what they're doing to attack us. Russia's, you know, bleeding us dry in Ukraine. Uh, the bottom line is that President Biden's got a, a very, very outdated mentality of where the world stands and the U.S.'s role and what we need to be doing. Hi, Sean Spicer. Thank you for your time. You bet. See you tonight. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.